dealing with a very important issue that roughly 1 in 10,000 American families have to deal with. What would you do if your child was born or adopted into your family with a rare genetic disease? The Johnson family of Louisville, Kentucky has just adopted 5-year-old Saskia from Northern Ireland. Saskia has a genetic mutation on her 12th chromosome causing a genetic disease called fetal canonaria, also known as PKU. PKU is a variety of symptoms, the most important of which, or the most known, is that the child cannot digest protein. We go now to Dr. Anna Ciccone and Dr. Rhea Conti as they help Max Johnson prepare for a life with a child who has PKU. So, Dr. Ciccone, how common is PKU? PKU occurs in 1 in 10,000 American births, but it's more common in ethnic groups such as Irish, Italian, or Norwegian people. In Saskia's case, she has a 1 in 4,500 chance of having PKU because she's Irish. I'm thinking about having kids, but my children are Turkish and Norwegian. Will they have PKU? Um, not necessarily. PKU is a recessive genetic disorder, which means both parents must either be affected by PKU or carriers of PKU. And how do you get tested for PKU? Because you've got me sort of worried. You can take a simple blood test from a genetic counselor like me to test for PKU or for the gene, but if your child is born with PKU, it's very manageable. What exactly is necessary for the care of a child with PKU? It's not hard to as long as you watch your fee levels. It's very manageable if you don't eat foods with proteins in them. Wait, but if they can't eat protein, well, aren't they missing a lot of important nutrients? Yes, but scientists have discovered this thing called a shake, which basically replaces all the nutrients lost by not eating protein-rich foods. Depending on how severe the PKU case is, you would drink your shake one to three times per day, and a doctor can tell you that. It's kind of like a normal shake. There are some that you'll like and some that you won't like. So depending on what your child or you prefer, you can buy that particular brand of shake. All right. Thanks for your time, Dr. Ciccone. Thank you for having me. So the most important thing to keep in mind when you're feeding Saskia is that a lot of foods you think of when you think of protein, she can't actually eat. So people with PKU have um, a mutation on their PAH gene, on their 12th chromosome, which basically means that the enzyme phenylalanine, which is found in protein-rich foods, isn't turned into tyrosine correctly. And if the body has an excess of phenylalanine, it can actually poison your brain. Okay, no dairy, meats, beans, or nuts, but what about fruits and vegetables and uh, like grain products like these cakes here. Of course there's going to be a tiny bit of protein in lots of foods, but the only thing you need to stay away from is foods that are super high in protein. So how will I know how to monitor her fee levels? Because it seems like protein is basically in everything. Um, when your daughter arrives, the best thing to do is bring her to me or another genetic counselor who can test her blood for how much phenylalanine is already there and then we can decide how much phenylalanine is safe for her to have every day. There are also some foods high in phenylalanine that you really wouldn't expect. The artificial sweetener aspartame is found in lots of diet sodas and gums, which has a really high phenylalanine level. So as long as you stay away from those and stick to a low protein diet, you should be okay. So it's really important for someone with PKU to monitor their phenylalanine levels in their blood to make sure that they're not poisoning themselves. Well, I still want Saskia to have a normal life at school. The peer, I don't want her the peers making fun of her. So what should I give her to make her feel, you know, regular or normal? I know it's a big challenge for a lot of families, but if you send them to school, like the teacher has a supply of, say, Mike and Ike's or another hard candy that Saskia can have while her peers are having cupcakes, it'll make her feel like she's still having something, even if she's not having the same treat. Um, and a lot of kids really are fine with that a lot of the time. Okay. Um, also, I know that this is a lot to take in, but um, a really key part of the PKU diet is making sure that your child has what's called a shake. And there's a lot of different kinds of shakes, so that one is fennel free, this one's PKU cooler. And um, basically it's a drink that you drink one to three times a day that replaces the nutrients that is lost um, when your body doesn't have any protein in it. And um, it's really, really important. And when you come in for your tests, I can tell you how much you need to drink the shake also. All right, thanks so much everyone for watching our show tonight. Thank you to the Johnson family. Wish you luck in the fall. Thank you to our specialists coming in. Have a good night, everybody.